In this video I'm going to show you how I made this bowl. It's a coil bowl using a mould. When I was making this coil bowl I used a plaster mould to shape the bowl around. You don't have to use a plaster mould, you can just use an ordinary plastic kitchen bowl. I used the plaster mould just because I like the shape and the size and the fact that it didn't have any ridges on the bottom. Plaster moulds are very easy to make and if you're interested in knowing how to make them, if you don't already know, I'll put a link in this video just here to a video that I've made on how to make plaster moulds. The other thing that I do is I covered the plaster mould in cellophane or saran wrap or whatever you want to call it for a couple of reasons. One reason is that it stops the plaster from absorbing the moisture from the clay the other reason is that when you've finished the bowl it makes it a lot easier to remove the clay from the mould if you've wrapped it in in plastic first, in a fine plastic first. So you just stretch the cellophane across the mould as tightly as you can to make it as wrinkle free as possible. And with these coils I'm not slipping and scoring them, I'm just positioning them together in the first instance and then when I've got a little bit of the design together I do start blending them together to so that they hold their shape. With this particular design I did do a sketch of how I wanted it to be before I started putting it together because it was quite a symmetrical, a symmetrical design and I just wanted to have an idea of where it was going. I didn't stick to the design absolutely but it was just good to have an idea of what I wanted it to look like in the end. So as you can see I'm doing a bit of blending there just to make sure that it, it starts to hold together a little bit. And with coil bowls you can do it one of two ways. You can either position the coils on the outside of the bowl or alternatively you can build the coils up on the inside. If you're using a just a regular kitchen bowl you can actually do the same, use the same process but build it up on the inside of the bowl. I decided to go for the outside on this occasion because I wanted the outside of the bowl to be smooth. You have to blend one side of the coil bowl to make it hold together and I wanted to blend the outside of this one so that the design, the coil design was showing on the inside. So I'm building it up around the outside of this particular mould. And the design that I've chosen is quite symmetrical. You don't have to do that, you can, do, you can really use whatever design you choose. I like the symmetrical look because it's got a sort of a Celtic feel to it but you know you can do much more random patterns than this if you want to and you can use whatever kind of coil shapes you like, you can use swirls or waves or squiggles, whatever you like really. I'm just using a mixture of small balls of clay and little arches of coil to build up as I say the sort of symmetrical Celtic kind of design. And because the outside of the bowl is going to be blended really quite thoroughly at, at the end when the design is finished, you don't need to worry too much about tiny gaps between the coils. As you can see I am, I am blending it a bit really just so that it keeps its design and so that the, the finished design is relatively neat and tidy but small gaps aren't going to be problematic. So as you can see I've skipped forward here quite a bit in the design because otherwise it would just take a, it would make the video very long if I showed you absolutely every step of the of putting the coils together
Then when the design is finished, I use a wooden tool to start blending the outside layer of clay. And if there's any small areas that don't seem to have enough clay to blend in especially well, I add little balls of clay just to cover that particular patch. And you'd be surprised, you can, as provided the clay isn't incredibly soft, you can press on it relatively firmly without distorting the design underneath. And then once it's all blended in, I just use it a little bit of quite soft clay just to add a bit of body and strength to the bowl where it feels like it's a little bit thin or it feels like it could do with a little bit of extra support. And then once I was happy with the thickness of the bowl of overall, I use a metal rib just to even it up, tidy it up, make sure that the surface is nice and smooth. Get rid of most of the obvious lumps and bumps. And then when it's relatively even, I go over it with a rubber rib just to compress the clay and to give it a nice smooth finish. And then once you're happy with the outside, you can snip away the cellophane around the mould or the bowl, whatever you have used. You can see on the board underneath the bowl that tiny little flakes of plaster um, are being chipped away by the scissors, so that's why I just gave it a bit of a wipe. I gave the surface a bit of a wipe to get rid of any plaster flakes. And then once, it's, once the cellophane has been cut away, you can turn the bowl over and lift the mould out. And that's the design. And this is the really satisfying bit actually, is when you peel away the cellophane, you can see the design that's exposed underneath. Then I use a small wooden modelling tool just to tidy up any details in the bowl surface that need to be tidied up. And then what I did around the edge of the bowl, I used some very tiny pieces of clay, some very little coils of clay to blend in the details, the curved details and joins. If you have joins on the edge of a bowl, it's a good idea to blend them in really thoroughly because, because it looks tidier and also if they're blended in well with a little bit of extra clay, it makes it much less likely that they will crack and open up when the clay dries or when it's being fired. And here is the finished piece. 
If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.